Hello everyone. Welcome back to Reverse Engineering Linux 32-bit Applications. In this video, we're going to continue our discussion of stack buffer overflows. And in particular, we're going to show you how you can determine an offset for your return address. So where do I need to put in my return address? in order to successfully exploit a stack buffer overflow vulnerability. We are going to go ahead and create a little Python script. So as always with our Python scripts, we'll begin with a shebang user bin e python2 should be sufficient in this case. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Call it testy.py. And now gedit will know what to do. Give me syntax highlighting and things like that. And I'll just say this is a simple fuzzer. And I will import. OS. OS will allow me to launch my debugger with my application here in a little bit. And I will say, here are my parameters. Here's my parameter. I'm going to start out with this string. I'm going to say, please run EDB. And have that run my application buffer overflow space and then what am i going to pass to buffer overflow instead of just passing it a whole bunch of a's i am going to pass it a string of characters that vary so i'm going to give it a little loop here i'm going to say for i in the range hex a1 to hex ff param plus equals chr, the character represented by i. So that's the ASCII value for my character. Let's say param plus equals. A single quote. So I'm going to put what I pass into my program in single quotes. So I'm going to add a single quote here. Now, why do I do that? A single quote says, hey, even if this is some sort of weird character, please do not interpret it, Mr. Shell. Right? I do not want the shell interpreting all these funny characters. It can cause problems for me. Instead, I just want them to pass it right on through. And then I will call my command. So that's it. Very simple little Python script. Let me pull up my command prompt. So I'm going to run my script. Here's my application says there's no analysis. Let me fix that. Now let me set a new breakpoint. First let me run to my first breakpoint. Set a breakpoint right before my Call to stir copy and run to that new breakpoint. So here I am at my new breakpoint, getting ready to call stir copy. I have my source and destination addresses on the stack. I will call and notice I got a bunch of interesting values on my stack. So I have 
A1, A2, A3, A4, etc. Now it's displayed a little bit strangely because of the way that I'm displaying my stack at the moment. I remove my return value of 1 into EAX. I call leave. And now what's on top of my stack? My return address. C2, C1, C0, BF. So BF is the lowest value. So that's where my return address starts. And the address that I'm returning to is actually FF, C4, E6, 5F. That is the location that I'm going back to on my stack. So now when I call return, it's going to say, I'm sorry, but I wasn't able to go back here. And I misspoke a little bit there. It's 5C, not 5F at the end. That's the address that I have. So this value of BF is actually stored in 5C. And again, it's little ended. So it's stored in reverse order. But it's displayed correctly here. So now what happens if I say return? It says, I'm sorry, I tried to go to C2, C1, C0, BF, and that address does not appear to be mapped. So that's a problem. So now what? Now what am I going to do? Here's what I want to do. I want to slightly modify my script. And I want to tell it, all right, let's give it a different address. What is the offset to that address? And we will start with just trying to give it a particular address. And then we will go from there and we'll show you how you can inject some shell code. So in this video, I'm primarily just wanting to show you how you can calculate this offset. So we saw that BF was the first value. So I'm going to use my calculator. So here it is, the standard Linux calculator. I'm going to give it a different mode, programming mode. And I'm going to say, I would like to use hexadecimal, please. So from our script, here we used A1 as our starting point. And the question is, how far do we have to go where we can just write random junk? And then we will write our appropriate value, our appropriate return address. Well, that is BF minus A1, which is hex 1E or in decimal 30. So I need to write 30 bytes of whatever I want. It doesn't really matter. And then after that, I need to give it the appropriate address. So let me go ahead and change this. And I'm going to make a very simple change. I'm going to get rid of this loop. And I'm going to say param plus equals a times 30. Then I'm going to add, and I'm also going to get rid of these single ticks. I'm going to add this value of 
backslash x e f backslash x b e backslash x a d backslash x d e So I've added the value dead beef. So that is the location that I'm going to try to return to when I run this script. Of course, it's little end in, so I have to reverse the order. So let me go ahead and run my new script. First, I need to go and close this. I will rerun my testy script. And we're going to go ahead and just let her rip. I'll just run it. And run it again. And sure enough, it says, hey, you tried to go to this address, dead B. And that's not a legit address. So great. So what did we learn in this video? We learned how to calculate this offset to the return address so that we can put in our return address. So we're almost there. We're almost ready to do some serious exploitation of this application. So what is remaining? Well, instead of setting it to dead beef, which might be a nice joke, we want to send it to a particular place, possibly where we've injected some shellcode. So how do we do that? Well, that is the subject for a future video. So that is all for this video. Now again, as a reminder, this video is one in a series of videos that we have here at Pentester Academy on all kinds of information security topics, you know, things like Python programming, shell coding, assembly, you know, forensics of all types and of course reverse engineering as well so i hope you're enjoying this class and i look forward to seeing you in this and other classes here at pentester academy in the future so i will see you then